In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create 3D pixel explosion using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey what's up guys, Drew here and as you can see this is the final output and this is the stock image that I'm going to use. I found this stock image on deviantart.com and if you want to use the same image, the download link is in video description so feel free to use it. Now to create this effect, first of all we need to create a really wide frame. To do that, I'm gonna select my crop tool from here as you can see. And first of all let's hide this branding over here and a little bit there. And now after that as you can see i have this option here delete crop pixel it is unchecked so make sure that it is unchecked now after that uh, we have covered this from here now we need to extend it to do that i'm gonna hold my alter key and then i will drag it from here so it will stretch it from both sides instead of just a single one so let's stretch it a little bit uh, that seems nice and I'm making it a wide screen so that we have enough space to make the pieces uh, for the pieces that are gonna fly in the air. Now this is ready and as you can see it looks really nice. Now I'm gonna create a new blank layer from this second last icon here and put this under my layer 0. Then I will go to my uh, paint bucket tool. You have to right click here and select paint bucket tool and I will fill in black color. Oops, my foreground color is uh, different, so I'm gonna make sure it's black and then let's fill it good. Now, select my I'm gonna select my layer 0 and then apply a layer mask, this third option from here. Now, what we're basically gonna do is erase the unnecessary part. Now, in layer mask, you have to paint with black color to erase something. So, as you can see, and now I'm gonna erase it. And uh, as you can see, my brush is really soft. So if you look here, as you can see hardness is 0% and I'm gonna erase it from this side too. From this side, I'm gonna erase it until I reach her face. As you can see, I don't want any kind of hair. So that the piece that will fly will look really nice. Now, uh, if you say you mess up something and if you wanna bring something back, all you have to do is just paint with white color and you can bring that part back. And with black color, as you can see, uh, you can remove it anytime you want. You can use X key to flip between your colors so that you can save some time. So I'm gonna erase it a little bit here and we are good to go. So as you can see it looks really nice and fading in the background. Now we need to create a pattern that will become the blocks that will fly away. So to do that I'm gonna go to file and create a new document. And in the document as you can see my height and width are 20 pixel and the resolution let's make it uh, I don't know 100 pixel looks really nice and hit ok as you can see this is a really tiny document and I'm gonna make my brush size 1 pixel yes completely 1 pixel then I will click once here hold my shift key and click here now I still have not released my shift key I, it, it is still on and then I will click on this corner so as you can see we created a straight uh, L shape. Now to turn it into a pattern I'm gonna go to my edit and define pattern and let's name it uh, box pattern for two. Looks nice hit ok. Now let's go back to our original document here. Now I'm gonna create a new layer new blank layer and then I will fill in the white color in that. So let's see like paint bucket and fill in the white color. Now to apply the pattern, I'm going to double click here on my layer 2 and I will select a pattern overlay. Now in the pattern, if you scroll down at the end, there will be a pattern that you just created. So as you can see, we have this pattern here, but it is really tiny. So I'm going to make it as big as possible. So yeah, that looks nice. It is still a bit smaller, but we have solution for that. So hit OK. So at the max size, it is still small. Now to make the pattern bigger, first thing you have to do is right click on this layer and select rasterize it. So it will apply the pattern and it will become a single layer with pattern on it. Now then I'm gonna press Ctrl T and then I will hold my Alter and Shift key and then I will make it bigger from this corner. So as you can see it is getting bigger but from all the sides so that is really helpful. So slightly more bigger and that looks really nice and confirm it. Now we need to get rid of this white color because we just need the black boxes. So to do that, I'm gonna go and select my color range. So go to select options and select color range. 
and select white color and as you can see my fuzziness is all the way up to 200% and then hit ok now just simply press delete key and it will go away now to get rid of the selection I will go to select and then I will go to deselect so as you can see we just have this simple box patterns here now we do not need it on entire image so to get rid of that just simply use the eraser tool and then I will remove it from everywhere so as you can see my eraser is also as you can see it is really smaller and to make this bigger and smaller i'm using my bracket keys as you can see th uh, this one makes smaller this one makes bigger so remove it and do not completely remove it until you are near like yeah when you're near the nose don't completely remove it this looks nice and i'm gonna do the same thing here but this time i'm gonna i'm not gonna erase it completely i'm gonna leave it till here now if you remember our pattern was really big and it was also outside the frame so if I select my move tool and move it around we have the rest of the area but we do not need that all we need is just this portion so to get rid of that again select your crop tool and this time click on delete crop pixel and just hit enter and when it shows you something like this the area that you are going to delete just again hit enter and it will be gone. So now if I remove my pattern, there is only this portion and the rest of the area is completely gone. So as you can see, uh, this looks nice, but we can make it better. To do that, I'm going to press Ctrl T and then I'm going to right click and select Warp. So this will allow me uh, to like rotate the angle of this shape and then I'm going to put this again back here and this here. So this can take a little bit of trial and error. Uh, so let's put it here and a little bit here. And then again, I'm going to move it from this angle. I want this line to be aligned with the face. As you can see, this line here. So I'm going to rotate it even a little bit more. And then let's go and adjust it here too. But as you can see, this one has gone away. So I'm going to drag this one uh, to its place. So it will take some time. So I'm just going to fast forward it. So now as you can see it looks really nice and it will take it time so be careful and have some patience and once you think that it looks really nice all you have to do is just go here and confirm it. So it will apply its shape and it will take its time. So as you can see now it looks really nice and now we can remove the unnecessary parts uh, that we don't need. So I'm just gonna go and simply here remove it here and uh, as you can see I'm taking really good care of the edges uh, as you can see here uh, take your time uh, don't rush it too much and then I'm gonna erase it from here too uh, from the outside so it looks like that it is actually wrapped around the face and uh, that looks really nice and then I'm, I can also like move it slightly on this side so it matches the uh, face properly and that looks uh, really nice now the basic layout looks good and it's time to create the 3d pixels so to do that i'm gonna create a new blank layer and creating the new blank layer is really crucial part do not forget about that and i'm gonna name this layer 3 black boxes or you can name it pixels whatever you prefer it doesn't have to be something like this so now go and select your polygon lasso tool uh, from here and then as you can see you have this uh, black dots at every corner so you have to exactly click on that one and then uh, when you reach on this uh, where you started double click and it will turn it into a selection so this way you have to create different different boxes and take your time and as you can see since we wrapped it around so when we will cut it as you can see here and a bit here and here we're good to go so this way uh, you can create as many boxes as you want and sometimes uh, let's say you mess up something or you have this uh, tail here that annoys you all you have to do is just press backspace and it will go away not a big deal so let's create one more box here uh, for the sake of tutorial i have chosen quite bigger boxes as you can see uh, so I will recommend uh, using slightly smaller boxes than you it will take a pretty good amount of time uh, to decide which box to use but it's gonna be really helpful and for the edges as you can see here we don't have any guidelines so just simply click on this edge 
uh, from this portion and then here so this way you can deal with the edges and uh, let's go and uh, can we create another box uh, that we can use uh, nah it doesn't look that great so as you can see we have a decent amount of pieces uh, not too much so make sure you, there's there's not like a lot of pieces in single line uh, one here 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 and we're good to go so as you can see the pixel cutouts are ready and they are kind of random and rushed so uh, once the selection is ready and also one really important tip before you do this make sure your second option here is selected otherwise it will not allow you to make multiple boxes and once you make a selection and try to make new one this one will go away so make sure you have selected the second one after that as you can see i have my black color ready here on the foreground now to fill in black color in all these boxes at once i will press alter backspace so it will fill in the black color and meanwhile i still have my selection on i will go to my layer zero and i have selected this thumbnail not the layer mask but the thumbnail and then i will press ctrl j so if i turn this everything off as you can see it just made the copy of those pieces uh, that we created using the selection of these black pieces so and also you can go to select and deselect the selection if you have it so uh, this looks really nice and i'm gonna put uh, first of all let's rename this layer 3 and let's name it uh, flying boxes and put this on top of everything and then i'm gonna go and select my move tool and now i'm gonna press my shift key and i will hold it and then i will drag it uh, to the distance as you can see a little bit here not too much uh, not too far away uh, exactly here now it's to add the depth in them that will make them look like it's a sort of 3d and it is actually coming apart from her face so to do that let's start with the black boxes turn off this flying boxes we don't need them for now i'm gonna double click on these black boxes and then i will select bevel and emboss and in the bevel i'm gonna increase the size but as you can see when i increase my size it it is making it smaller uh, sorry softer so to make it sharp i'm gonna increase my depth so it will make it sharper a little bit now it's too much depth so i'm gonna decrease it back a little bit and then i'm gonna adjust the lighting uh, so it looks like it's coming from other angle yeah so that looks really nice as you can see so it looks like there are actually holes in her face and that is also the reason you have to select the black color as your background color it is really important now you can use counter but uh, i don't find it really helpful because it just uh, i don't know doesn't look that good but if you find it helpful good for you uh, let's say counter and let's increase the range a little bit yeah counter also works nice so i'm gonna hit okay so as you can see we just created the depth and the counter is helping a little bit not too much and now it's time to add the depth in the flying pieces and to do that again double click on the flying boxes and then i'm gonna go and select bevel and emboss and as always increase the size first and then depth for the sharpness uh, but if you notice the difference the light uh, from these boxes doesn't look good uh, I want this highlight to be here now if I try to change it It will also change the angle of these boxes, which I don't want so let's first of all make it normal here uh, And then I'm gonna uncheck my use global light and then now if I change it It will not affect the black boxes as you can see and That looks really nice now it's time to add some shadows so to do that i'm gonna go and select drop shadow simple option and then uh, once you select this you can put your shadow anywhere you want so i'm gonna put it here you can also use angle manually but it's just painful to use it you know so i'm gonna put my shadow here uh, like this and then i will increase its size to make it softer and then uh, let's adjust it a little bit on top yeah and then I'm gonna uh, decrease its opacity so it doesn't look distracting instead of just a slight shadow that gives it depth so uh, yeah a little bit less and that looks really nice and then hit ok so as you can see uh, there is this uh, shape and everything is ready now uh, select your flying make sure you have selected your flying boxes layer and then press ctrl T 
now right click and select perspective here and then I'm gonna drag it a little bit in the perspective so it looks like it's coming off from here you can also go this way like this but that looks just not that good so I'm gonna put it here and that looks nice and then confirm it now I'm gonna go to filter blur and apply some motion blur and in the motion blur as you can see I have selected a zero angle and then I'm gonna increase my motion a little bit not too much because too much will ruin it so that looks nice and then I'm gonna hit OK as you can see there's a pieces that are flying away the shadow to give it depth now let's uh, worry about the lines now that we created the grid uh, we are going to actually use it so to do that I'm gonna change its blending mode to overlay so as you can see there is a slight amount of depth here but we can increase that to do that I'm gonna double click here and first of all I'm gonna select my outer glow so now there is as you can see there's some shadow and uh, sorry the glow and instead of this yellowish color I'm gonna select uh, a color from her skin a bit more orangish and that looks nice and then let's increase the size a little bit uh, and let's go and decrease the opacity so it doesn't look very uh, distracting uh, instead it looks the part of it and then I'm gonna just go and simply hit OK now if I zoom in as you can see it looks like there are actually pieces that are falling apart the depth and the difference it makes like using bevel and emboss and also using this grid and the outer glow now this is a rushed product all I wanted to do is teach you the workflow now let's go and study the actual file that I created uh, which is here as you can see so here as you can see pieces are a bit more smaller I took my time with adjusting the glow and uh, since I had smaller pieces I could use more of them and adjust them even better and create different more styles as you can see one two three cutouts on the corner that's amazing so this way you can uh, using smaller pieces and taking your time is the key do not rush it this is the workflow that you know how you can create it and to add that uh, contrast just go to create a new adjustment layer and select brightness contrast and then I'm gonna add a couple of contrast in here as you can see so it looks more sharp like cool as you can see here now if you create something like this using my tutorial you can go to my Facebook page and post it there I will happily review it and as you can see this is here let me put it on full screen so you can study this one better because it uh, the time was taken using this video I took my time like uh, making this effect so as you can see the way I have adjusted the pieces here and the sharpness so so I really hope that you learned something from this video and if you did hit that like button so I can know and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions regarding this video feel free to ask them in the comment section below and if you want to check out more videos like this you can click on any of these boxes and check out them plus you can click on the subscribe button so it will take you to my channel where I have more than 75 free photoshop tutorials and after subscribing every time I upload a new video you will get the update for that so till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.